Does the idea of cold water get you shivering just from the thought alone? Despite the challenge and initial shock of getting into cold water, it's something that a lot more people are turning to as a form of wellness and therapy because of the benefits like reducing inflammation, helping to improve mood, and speeding up recovery from workouts. And cold exposure can even support your weight loss goal. So with all these benefits to getting cold, we see a flow spa, a lot of customers wondering about which form of cryotherapy or cold exposure is the very best. You could turn your shower to full cold, step into an icy river, go into a cryo chamber, or alternate sauna and cold plunges. But which form is going to be the best for the results that you want? So I want to talk about the four main ways that you can do cold plunges or cold exposure, and which ones are supported by research, as well as which ones our clients at Flow Spa seem to prefer the most. So the first option is the most accessible one. It's taking a cold shower. This is where most challenges to get into cold plunging or doing cold exposure will start by suggesting that you work your way up by finishing off your regular shower with some cold exposure. And this works great as a way to push through the mental toughness of cold exposure because all those icy droplets are particularly challenging to face, but you're not getting a full body immersion into the cold water. And depending on where you live and the time of year, it's not going to be very cold. It can work great in the winter when the water from your local water supply is particularly cold. But in the summertime, usually that water is around 64 Fahrenheit, and that's not going to be enough to really get much of a benefit from the cold exposure. So the next option is a cryo chamber or cryotherapy using liquid nitrogen or electricity to create an extremely cold environment that you step into. This extremely cold air can surround your body, but is it actually that much more effective for being 10 times the cost of a typical cold plunge? Research far favors the use of cold water immersion over these other cryotherapy chambers. And anecdotally from many of our clients at Flow Spa who have been into any sort of cryo chamber versus the cold water immersions of a cold plunge, have found that the cold plunge is much more effective than the cryo chamber for the results that they're looking for, particularly around sports performance and recovery. But what is it about cold water immersion that makes it so much better? It's primarily due to the conduction of heat and being in cold water is far more effective for drawing that heat out of your body, which is going to create that anti-inflammatory response that we see as one of the potent benefits to cold exposure. When you're in cold water, it draws that heat away, but when you're in a cryo chamber and it's just that air that's blowing at you, there's a bit of a vapor barrier created by your body, which is going to mitigate some of the effects of the cold air. We also see our bodies send out a huge spike in neurotransmitters in the cold water, screaming to get out because it's something that is naturally uncomfortable. And this releases that huge wave of dopamine and norepinephrine that gives you that feel good effect from the cold water and leaves you with a boosted mood and increased focus and energy. So whether you start doing cold plunges at home or you find a place that allows you to do it locally, or you also just go down to the lake or river in the winter time, there is one clear challenge to that. And that is that getting cold can be dangerous, but also is really tough to warm back up from, which is why there's one more option that's our favorite at Flow Spa. Contrast therapy involves doing the cold plunge, but also alternating back and forth, whether that's in a sauna or a hot tub or having both options so that you can manage that cold and also keep your core temperature a little bit higher so that you're not reaching a point of shivering or getting too cold and being unable to warm up afterwards. By warming up first, by relaxing in the sauna or getting into a hot tub and then alternating that with the cold plunges afterwards, 
you're able to spend much more time in the cold water to reach that optimal threshold for deliberate cold exposure, as well as creating a circulatory effect between the hot and cold, which is also going to open and close your blood vessels and improve circulation and improve recovery that way too. It's a much more controlled environment by alternating the hot and cold exposure. And because you are doing this in a relaxed state, even though it is mentally challenging, you're gonna leave it feeling amazing and getting the most benefits out of your cold plunges. I also find that this is a great way to train up to doing longer times or lower temperatures with cold plunges because you do have that ability to get warm again if you push it a little too far. So the mental toughness training of this actually is even better than just getting into a cold plunge and then having to quickly get back out. Whether you're going to find a place locally like Flow Spa that offers contrast therapy, or you're going to build a setup for yourself at home, I definitely recommend trying to find a way to incorporate the hot and cold whenever possible. Thank you for watching the video. I appreciate you for tuning in. If you've got any more questions about contrast therapy, cold plunges, or any other form of sports recovery, feel free to drop a comment below and we can chat more. And until the next video, find your flow.